All right, how's everybody doing today? Uh, <laughs> having some slight technical difficulties to start the stream out. Uh, apparently, chat is currently broken, so that's unfortunate. But um, yeah, it should be a fun stream today. Hyperland revisited. We're gonna be going through. We'll do a basic like server-based version of Arch install, and then go into uh, installing Hyperland. So it should be fun. We'll see how that goes. It's it. I have a Hyperland project, Hyperland Titus on GitHub. I hadn't used that in like a year or something, and I think I've just accepted pretty much any PR that showed up there. So we might look at that script. I don't even know if it's any good or not. We'll have to take a peek at that. It should be should be fun. Uh, but other projects that obviously with uh, Windows Utility and uh, the Linux Toolbox and all that that we've been working on, that's been fun. And uh, definitely been kind of continuing that offline, just kind of polishing things up. I probably will start to make videos about little pieces of it once it's more fully formed. Um, I haven't been making very many YouTube videos lately just because uh, it's just been summertime. I haven't really had much time to get around to making YouTube videos. Uh, but uh, at the same time, I like to keep the stream schedule going just because, well, that forces me to uh, set aside the time to, to tackle pretty much these things every single week, which is good. So I love the stream just because it kind of keeps me honest, so to speak, because it forces me to, to keep working on those projects and uh yeah but today we're gonna have fun with hyperland should be fun once i'm able to get this chat up which eh, it looks like i might have to fall back to old school chat ah oh, that's unfortunate man this thing sucks oh, don't you just hate it when you have technical difficulties right out of the gate oh well it's all good we will just do this and we will be good all right yeah um as far as the chat goes let's see do we have ah oh, yeah yeah does that work there we go uh we lose opacity when i do it like this but it always works so we're just gonna we're just gonna rock the old school one if there's anything in the top right hand corner that's super important you're just gonna miss it <laughs> but uh, usually nothing happens up there so yeah we'll see I like having the chat up on the on the stream so Twitch and YouTube can kind of go back and forth. <laughs> Contact your sysadmin and that's me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jennifer, that sucks. That's always fun, like, ah, uh, well then. <laughs> uh, ah, all right, Colm. Uh, on YouTube today. Nice. Yeah, DWM still needs a little more polish. I haven't made a video about it just because it does require a little bit more polish for sure. Uh, why don't you try NixOS plus Hyperlint? I mean, NixOS is cool. Uh, NixOS is great for redistributable environments and things of that nature. Uh, having everything in one config file, I, I do enjoy. But uh, your average user should not use NixOS. I think we can all agree there. Like, NixOS is not meant for your average user. It's more meant for uh, a technical or high-level sysadmin and, and someone that wants redistributable uh, images, which is cool. You know, so that's that's really what Nix OS is geared towards. Uh, Titus is a huge Nix hater, so huge. <laughs> I love Nix. I love Nix. Uh, I just don't think it's good for everybody. I I think that's just a silly take. I know you love it, Phoenix. I know you love it. I don't I don't want to bash you, but that's just my it's just my opinion, bro. <laughs> um. How many times has your arch broke? Uh, I don't know. It's actually been really good this year, surprisingly. <laughs> Knock on wood. Uh, I don't know why it's been so good this year. I've actually had less problems on arch than... The, honestly, this spin of arch has been probably the best experience I've had in Linux desktop in my lifetime. That's a pretty bold statement, but it has been a fantastic experience. Uh, I think we did break it once when we had uh an nvidia i i like updated the kernel like the day of the kernel release to i think it was like uh kernel 6.10 i want to say or maybe it was 6.8 i can't remember but it was like right as it released and i upgraded right to it and then my nvidia drivers broke which you know th that's gonna happen especially when you're rolling uh the day of so I ended up just switching to LTS for both Linux and NVIDIA, so I don't really have any of those problems anymore. 
So that that's my my solution. But how are we going to do this is the bigger question. Do we use it on the main system? Nah, I don't think we're going to start that way. We may end up doing something like that. But for the most part, I think what we'll probably end up doing is something like a virtual machine. Something, something like Vert Manager and then kind of pulling this in into here because I think this would be a fun one to do. Uh, let's just shut this guy down. Um, shut that guy down. We have an arch server here. What was running on this one? Yeah, VM safety. Uh, a necessary tool in the toolbox for sure. What are my NVIDIA drivers? I wonder, now that you say don't use them. I'm using 555 for the NVIDIA drivers. So that's uh it's and those have been solid for me it's been great i've been able to do my video editing been able to do everything just perfect like i said i've already knocked on wood a bunch i don't want to talk i don't want to praise this anymore because as soon as i do something's gonna break all right what was in here let's uh we had an existing arch server for some for some odd reason what was in here how long ago did we do this oh oh okay um all right well we'll just use this one then that's Interesting. All right, cool. Well, we're, we're ready to roll. Uh, ooh, before we do this, though. Oh, crap. Did, oh, shouldn't have. Shouldn't have done that. Ah, oh, my bad. All right, can I find... Oh, well. Uh, we're trapped here. So I, I hit full screen, and I can't remember. I think it's Control-Alt. Control-Alt-F. Control-Shift-F. Uh, no, Control. It was Control... Hmm. I don't, I don't know what happened there. Strange. Um... Hmm. Control Alt Shift F. I can't remember what it was. Oh well. So so be it. We we are here. Uh this is what we're gonna rock now. Let's make sure everyone can see everything. Let's go like 28B. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah. Big, big font. You know, so the, the phone users out there can see what we're doing. Um Control Alt R. Maybe lose focus. Control Alt R. Oh, no. I don't know. Uh, whatever. I mean, we can always shut this down and then it kick us out. So it's not that big a deal. Is this a clean install? I think so. We could always re do. Should we reinstall? I thought it was Control Alt F, and then you get get it back. Um, it could be like Control Alt. Um, ooh, I don't think I have a left Alt to unbind. Whatever. It's fine. We're we're stuck here. It'll be fine for a while. Um, what do we have on our partitions here? So this right now is a, we have two discs. One's 50 gigs, one's 20 gigs. The 20 gig one is not mounted. It's kind of odd arrangement. Uh, let's go disc free human, human readable. We currently are rocking a little bit tight on the boot partition. I would not have... Should not have done 300 megs on the boot partition. That seems a little silly. I uh, like to go one gig these days. Uh, and then everything else is in root. We don't have like a separate home folder or anything. Any crazy shenanigans. A ah, pretty simplistic setup. So let's... Uh, probably the first thing I like to do with a brand new... Was there a console? I think it was V console. Yeah. I want to say you can do like font equals... V or tur V 28B. Uh, I think that will set the font automatically. Now, I could be wrong on that one, but um, let's reboot just to see what happens. Yeah, no, that works. Look at me. Look at me. All right, cool. So now, everybody, we're not going to do set font every single time. We just wanted to set our default ones to just be giant. Old man mode is what I... Uh, <laughs> 300 in both boot that's a bold strategy let's see if it pays off <laughs> yeah hopefully we probably should do a pac-man update first um oh no oh jeez. wow oh, dude i f what in the world all right fat fingered all that didn't i all right let's just do it syu uh because i have no idea when we installed this thing so we'll just uh go ahead and getting pretty decent transfer rates here no complaints on my part. Uh, pretty much a solid uh, 10 megabytes per second. So, nice. So we're done with our 3 gig download, update, reboot, and we'll have a nice fresh start 
to our Hyperland install. Do you use fiber? Yes, yes, fiber connection. I think I, I originally I had like five up and down, and then I realized five up and down is a little bit too much for that. I, really, you don't need five five gigs up and down unless you have like a, a, a lot of different users using stuff at the same time, which I don't. It's always just me. And really for me, one gig up and down is sufficient. I'm not a greedy man. And five gigs was just a little bit too much insanity. I was like, okay, I'm paying all this extra money for that. Uh, I ended up going back to one gig. Yeah. So we're updated. Let's re give it another reboot. And I will say why I love Arch is it's just so minimal. And you can reboot the system in like seconds. That's what system D and everything. And it's just, it's just so darn good for like building stuff like it's so much fun to play in i think it's like my favorite sandbox of all time just because it just is easy all right oh yeah alpine linux for sure commander if it, i think i love arch because you have so many tools at your disposal with alpine if i'm like making a specific use case like hey i want to run like a container or one little thing somewhere on like a box and i just want to set it and forget it kind of thing I love Alpine for that. It's the best. But if I want to just kind of play around and install a whole bunch of crap and I don't know what I'm going to go, where I'm going to go, I love Arch just because there's so many different paths you can take. All right. So what do we have in here? What were we doing in here? We were building DWM Titus on this one. We have StartX. We do have StartX. How about that? Okay. Oh, all right. Um, if I'm doing these hotkeys... Wow. Okay. I love QEMU. It's it's capturing all my hotkeys. Um I I'm just a little worried that I might flip between my main system and this system and then all of a sudden bad things are going to happen because all my hotkeys are the same between the systems. So if QEMU does give up focus on this, we could easily switch over into my main system and that would be bad. That would be really bad. So we do have some concerns here minor concerns but concerns nonetheless but eh, we'll just run fast fetches from time to time just to make sure okay so probably starting out we got a blank canvas we have basically i think dwm on here if we want to jump into that we can but we want hyperland today so let's do a git clone we're gonna start with the old github project Chris Titus Tech, uh, Hyperland Titus. Now, Hyperland Titus hasn't been updated in more than a year. So what is Hyperland Titus? Um, oh, oh, ah, more? Ah, there we go, okay. Less, more, I don't know. So we're adding SDDM, okay. Oh, one second, I think I had, had some pop up from old YouTube. All right, AM challenge for those of us with decade old laptops incompatible with Wayland, show us how you can do with regular hyper. Or if you hate your free time, get Wayland working on an NVIDIA 3090 driver. I'm going to take a hard pass on that challenge. I appreciate the donation of $10 though, AE, uh, but no way am I ever going back to the 390s NVIDIA drivers. Uh, I think we had someone in chat, it might have been you the other day that said they were on a 14 year old Nvidia card. That's insanity. Uh, Hyperland Titus is arch only. I think back in the day, Hyperland used to be arch only, but now it's in the Debian repo. So yeah, uh, we can, we can adapt it to Debian though. We got Hyperlock, Hypercursor. There's a bunch of stuff. actually has been busy. He's been a busy, busy man. All right. Uh, well, let's run the script. What happens? I give this about a 5% chance of working. Would you like to install packages? Yes. Man, that was kind of clean. Okay. Uh, Waybar and Swaylock, huh? Ugh. It's kind of gross. Um, fantastic script. Failed miserably. But to be expected. So let's go set hyper. What are we going to use? So you got Way, Swaylock, and Waybar for this so what we're gonna do is just like a search waybar oh 
Way bar. Forgot I'm using Ye over here. Haru, Ye, whatever. The Go versus the Rust crowd. All right, Way bar. Just a crap ton of stuff in Way bar. Um, Way bar Crypto. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Uh, you know, let's just go Start X for now. I kind of want to see this in in here. Can we get like a better resolution? This seems a little bit, a little bit wild. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah. We got Xorg installed. So, one second. Just getting my bearings. I think that's Xorg, Xrandar. So this is Xorg, but we're gonna be installing Wayland's uh, one, which I think is WL Randar. Uh, but for now, as we're on Xorg, we got this. Uh, let's set our resolution. Feeling like 1920 by 1080. You know how much I like my 1080s. Such a strange refresh. Okay, yeah, 1080, 60 is good. So, uh, let's go, yay. We're gonna go A Randar. So we're gonna get a little, go back in time to old Xorg, which everyone knows how much I love Xorg. Oh, this is kind of ugly though. Uh, oh, here, so you guys can see what's up. Oh, no, never mind. You can't see what's up. I don't know what's going on with that, but let's go 1080 and we'll just apply that. All right, cool. That's a little more sane. And how do we want to set the resolution each time it boots up? Since we're switching to Wayland, I don't think it matters. So now let's do a search of Waybar. So for Waybar, what happened with Waybar? G bar is much better. I agree, Scott. I think we need to change this and go G bar. I, I had a good experience with G bar. If you're unfamiliar, G bar is like a rust based bar. And I think it's a lot better than G bar or better than Waybar. Um, I guess we're using Firefox in this system. Oh, blind. Ah, flash mic. So bright. <laughs> oh, Lordy. What, what did I have on here? Let's restore session. Here's a risky click on a live stream. Oh, Lord. We were doing Linux from scratch on this system. That's what we were using it for. Oh, oh PTSD. Okay. Uh, that's right. Uh, let's go. Tux, thanks for the gifted sub. All right. We'll do Waybar. No, we're going to go G bar. Is Gbar in any of the repos? Oh, well, Gbar Linux. You know what? While we're here, let's test out LinUtil. I think we. I want to kind of run a couple of my LinUtil stuff. Oh, my word. Dark mode, you're failing at your job. Do we not have Dark Reader? It's on, but it's off. Okay, well, all right. Oh, I never did update this. Darn it. Hmm. Did I get theme set up? Dang it. Hmm. One second. Minor detour. One second. I'm gonna just power that guy off for a second. Well, don't worry, we'll be back. I wanted to... Do we not have a release? Oh, we do have a release. Okay, cool. That's two weeks ago. No release notes. All right. One second. We're gonna just do a quick release on LinUtil because I want to use this on here. It's still... I still don't recommend anybody doing this, but we're gonna use it today. <laughs> Thanks for the $20 super chat. That was indeed me with the decade old NVIDIA 560 soldered on. Oh my word. I am currently trying to replace it with a 980M. How do you replace a mobile processor? That's gonna be interesting. It's very fun searching board data from 3D. Oh my. Godspeed to you, sir. Trying to replace a 560 soldered GPU with a 980M. That sounds like, that's a tall order. That is a tall order. Good luck to you. All right, uh, let's let's do a release real fast. Should I do a release live on stream? Probably not, but entertainment. Let's run this action, do a release, come back to our VM. And then I just want to set up some theming so we have some like dark themes and then also just basic functionality. And then we do Hyperland. Yeah, yeah we're not going to do any coding today. Today's is not going to be a coding stream. We do have a whole bunch of stuff here, which is good. Bomb, thanks for the sub for the prime. Three months now. All right. Uh, yeah, that should be good. All right, cool. Um, with that action going, we should have a new release in our releases. We've been busy over here. Dude, look at all these PRs I've done. <laughs> that is a lot. All right, cool. Well, I wanted to test this on a dev branch, but we're just going to set that to the latest release because I want to just use it. I don't think anybody's really using... Linutil right now, so 
we're gonna be the we're gonna be like the first ones to really use it in practical use case. It may completely fail, but it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a fun fail. Look at that. Look at all those new contributors. Ah, all right, cool. All right, back to Arch we go. We've uh, went ahead and launched that. And I, you know what, let's just, nah, let's go full screen. I want it to lock all my hotkeys. So once we come into here, there's no going back, bam. Cause that bar just disappears and there's no finding it again. All right, so we're back here. Now we can jump back into, shoot, really? Takes a little bit, huh? That's kind of a strange, slow startup on the IAP, but anywho. All right, one second. Did I change the shortcut? I think I did. One second. A slight problem with the uh, release there live. What What was this? Should be latest releases, download latest. All right, let's go. Chris, Titus, Linux. Oh, somebody relabeled stuff, didn't they? Somebody changed the files. No, they did not. Ah. Uh, I got it. Uh, I'll, I'll fix this later. <laughs> Guys will remind me, uh, but we'll, we'll just, I got it. It'll be fine for now. We'll just, we're going to just Jimmy it. Um, actually let's just go. Okay. And quick fix. All right. We're good. Now we should be good. One last time. Here we go. Firing it back up. We're good this time. I did save that, right? I wonder what is going on with my network startup here. It is just taking a century. Come on. Uh, I think 3D Excel is on Phoenix, so I think we should be fine there. Yeah, this should be for all distros. We're, I'm, I'm going agnostic at least. So the big two things I want to cover here is with most of my projects is Arch and Debian. I really don't care about like Joe Blow's distro that he created. That's a fork of one of the main line distros. I don't really care if it doesn't work for that. The big distros that actually matter are really Arch and Debian. And, and when I say Debian, that, that means Ubuntu as well and Ubuntu's derivatives. That's like most of what everybody uses. I know other people out there use, you know, other distros, but they're so uh, obscure that I really don't care about them. Yeah, we should be fine now. I think it just takes a little bit. Um, let's go. Okay, cool. So we have this. Uh, let's go start X. Well, I, I want to use it from a GUI prompt though. It looks a little prettier. Uh, oops. <laughs> ah, all right. There we go. Now we're cooking with gas. Global theme. That's what I wanted to do. Set up the global theme real fast. So we got some global dark mode. Um, let's just get our build dependencies and everything set up too on the system. Just in case we need something for building Hyperland, application setup. I think right now we're using bash prompt or kitty prompt, uh, which is already set. Uh, Rofi setup. I wanted a better Rofi. It was like all white and nasty. So now when we go, yeah, cool. All right. Hey. All right, cool. Lin Util doing his job, rocking. It's basic, simple setup, but hey, it works. So we have that. And now when we go over to like, Firefox, it should be fine too. Firefox is still in like light mode. Let's go settings, dark please. Okay, cool. Way bar, uh, let's go G bar is what we we're, sorry, I got sidetracked. Now let's revert back to G bar. Now G bar git is in the AUR. Blazingly fast status bar written with GTK. Tell me you're using Rust without telling me you're using Rust. That's how. <laughs> all right let's go master race rust g bar uh we're gonna just grab the git and uh now nah, we won't remove that and then what else were we gonna grab uh what's the other one we had an issue with instead of way bar we'll switch that over to g bar and i think it was missing sway lock which i don't think we want to use sway lock anymore because I think uh, Hyperlint is completely independent of all of those. So is there like Hyperlock now? I bet you he's made it. What a Chad. All right. He did. Hyperlock. So we're switching out Waybar for Gbar. We're going to switch out 
sway lock for hyper lock and that should be good now let's go into hyperland titus let's go set hyper i think we're, we're gonna keep a lot of this stuff in the script and i'm not gonna edit this script too highly because i'm not logged into my github on this uh vm but let's go sway lock all right and then we got using sway bg as well uh, all right let's go sway lock hyper lock and let's go g bar get sway way bar delete and then oh geez i'm trying to think oh we need hyper cursor too i really wish more people would adopt hyper cursor the standard cursor from linux like that everyone's been using for decades is just hot garbage the hyper cursor is so much better <sighs> i don't understand why more people don't adopt that but linux is a weird community um way bar let's go next get rid of that all right sway lock effects probably get rid of that as well sway bg i think we'll keep do we need sway bg i don't know uh what else do we other sway junk in here just sway bg really don't see anything there what about way bar i don't see any conf stuff for way bar so that should pretty much update the script we'll have to copy this out afterwards uh, but let's see how it does. If, how it, Let's crack on. Let's get it going. <clears throat> Hyper Paper. Okay. Dude, is there anything Raxry hasn't made? Dude. Impressive. All right. L would you like to install packages? Yes. We should be able to go. This is an old script. We'll find out. So right now it's just doing the fonts, which is fine. I think I was doing Cascadia Cove nerd font for this. This look, I do like Cascadia Cove. It is very good. Meslo LGS is nice as well. JetBrains Mono Nerd Font is also pretty awesome. I have a hard time picking one. I like all three, honestly. Even Fire a Code's a decent fourth fourth place for me. Yeah, Vaxry is doing a great job as a dev. He's just taking on too much himself. I, I agree. I think that's just nature of the beast. He's young, though. When you're young, you can take on a lot of stuff. Like... And he, he's, he delivers on what he says. So, hey, that's that's good. Like I said, I'm, I'm here for it. I can't choose between Fire Code or JetBrains. I have a hard time, Pickley. I love both. I really don't think there's a wrong answer to that one. Oh, good. Well, good to see that Brody's uh, helping Vaxry like, promote his stuff. I'll do my part here. <laughs> I'll do my part as well. I'm doing my part. Are you doing yours? <laughs> Can you install Hyperland from scratch? I mean, this is basically from scratch. Uh, you can read the script to get all the different ones, but installing each individual package? No, because I don't even remember what packages to grab. We're just going to modify the script. We'll go through each package to install with the script, but we'll fix the script as we're going. So you get to see everything that we're doing. So then you can modify it to your needs. Yeah, this is pretty much as scratch as it gets. I mean, it's a server environment. Um, and we could modify like Arch Titus as well. We got a lot of time. I jumped on early, so this is going to be a little bit of a longer stream. So have a little patience. We'll get there. And we're going to look at some of this stuff. Will it be functional by the end of the stream? Give it about about 2.3% chance of it actually working for you. But there is a chance. <laughs> Uh, please fix Arch Titus. I agree, Sal. We have to. We're going to talk about it. All right. Would you like to copy config files? Sure. Um, Yeah, whatever. Let's do it. it looks like it's in the fonts section. <laughs> uh, all right. Would you enable? Yeah, sure. SDDM. Get it. Would you like to install Bluetooth packages? Hell no. Who uses Bluetooth on Linux? That sounds terrible. You can start Hyperland by typing Hyperland with a capital H. Would you like to start Hyperland now? Yes. Well, yeah, actually, that makes sense. We're in Xorg. You can't launch Hyperland from Xorg. That's just silly. All right. Hyperland. All right. Let's see. Configure. All right. Hyperland config file failed. Uh, line 51 decoration multi sample edges does not exist uh, we're getting a little flicker here it's gonna be a little dicey um that's okay just gonna have to 
Play it by ear. All uh, right. I didn't catch that. Uh, hyper, hyperland.com. All right. Nice. And then let's go to line 51. Maybe, maybe. Okay, that decoration, not good. Okay. It looks like a JSON statement. Hmm. Not coming back, huh? Rounding, edges, multi sampling. Okay, well, <laughs> that's not going to work for us. Uh, we, we, we need to actually see what the hell we're doing. <laughs> uh, let's go hyper. Let's vim hyperland comp. Let's go line 51. Multi sample edges true. Delete. Okay. So now let's come back to hyperland. What's the next error? All right. A little bit of a flicker. Didn't we say a VMware issue? Uh, maybe we need the 3D acceleration like you were talking about. All right. So, uh, oh, actually, P kill hyperland. All righty. Uh, Terry, thanks for the prime. And Pablo for the prime as well. Let's see what we got. I'm doing very well, Terry. Uh, I'm honestly waiting for Arch Titus to be usable again so I can reformat my notebook. Uh, currently broken Manjaro install. Oh man, all right, Papa, we're gonna get that going. I think we gotta do some Arch Titus work. We gotta get a third stream in every week. And the only time I know I can do it is on Mondays. I think I'll just sacrifice making YouTube videos and we'll just get a third stream on Mondays. So then that way we can get all our coding in. I don't think I'm gonna theme the, the ones out. Like Mondays would be like Arch Titus, Tuesdays, Windows Utility, Thursdays, Lin Util or Linux Toolbox, whatever we want to call it. Yeah, but I think we got to add the third stream so we can get all these projects up to date. I want to get my repos working properly. So let's power this guy off for now and let's fix this 3D acceleration. It looks like a 3D acceleration error. So let's uh, look at this. We go and uh, we got vert IO. Let's change that to a checkbox. I think that'll work. Oh, no, no. Um, what about if we switch it over? Let's apply that. I think we could do a vergl uh, install. Can't remember what. Vergl qmu. I want to say that would probably be the best way to do it. I remember Hyperland kind of sucking for VMs. Now that's always been kind of a thing. So if you are doing it, but I think VirGL should emulate the 3Ds properly. Now you can't use VirGL in like Windows because it's Windows, but this actually should work. I'm overthinking it. You know what? I'm overthinking this. Like if we come, I got an idea. Oh no, no, I can't do that. I was thinking about doing like looking glass setup, but then when this whole stream is going to turn into a PCI pass through nightmare. So yeah, yeah, Vert, Vert GL. Yeah, I was about to do PCI pass through Phoenix, but then I was like, I don't want to set all that up. I don't, I have a dummy card. It's currently set up for my Windows VM. It's going to be kind of wild. Uh, Vert GL will only give you open GL acceleration, not Vulcan acceleration from what I remember. Oh, damn it. Okay. Well, it might be enough to fix Hyperland. Oh. Guys, all right. I'm making an executive decision. All right, here we go. I really want to do Hyperland, but I don't think we can use a VM. I think we just got to do it live. So this stream's about to get a little more high stakes. Bit on the high stakes side of things. We're, we're going to do it live. Didn't want to do this, but it's bare metal time. It's the only way to do Hyperland and give it a, an honest shake. So before we start, let's take a backup. Let's do something I'm not known for and actually back up our system. And we're going to create a new one and uh, sync this guy up because uh, I want a full backup beforehand. Yeah, it might work, but that's the thing, Hikari. I, I think Hyperland uses a lot more stuff than just OpenGL. I, I want to say it leverages Vulkan as well. <laughs> Uh, Titus might pull an LTT and wipe the drive. Strong possibility. 67% probable. <laughs> uh, all right. Oh, we'll let this go. And then let's pull over Hyperland. Let's first. You know, I kind of like it going on bare metal anyways. 
What is this? Modified. Why? Hmm. What's yay? Gross. Okay. Remove yay. Um. Bam. Get ignore. We're gonna we're gonna fix this project up. Somebody was like, "Hey, I want to do it from scratch." Well, we can use your existing install. Uh, oh, we don't have any. Get ignore. All right. Well, we'll just set yay in there. What else do we have? Install log. We're. Ah. I just the noob did this one. This is before I knew how GitHub worked. Let's be honest. I still don't know how GitHub works, but I'm, I'm getting better. <laughs> this is back when I had uh, just a fraction of my current knowledge of GitHub. Uh, so we're going to actually make this project better and not suck so bad. All right. Here we go. We are off to the races. Sway lock effects. Let's get rid of it. Sway BG. Uh, what, what do we say? Hyper paper was the next one. Hyper paper. Okay. And then instead of way bar, we're going to go G bar because G bar get is just better. Hyper picker, grim blast, WL clipboard. Did, uh, has, has Vaxry decided to redo the clipboard as well and have like hyper clipboard? I would not be surprised. Man is crazy in a good way. Hyper lock. And, oh, this is a removal. We don't need that. Uh, why was there a removal? That's strange. Anywho, uh, we got hyper paper, nerd fonts, blah, blah, blah. What else do we have? Stall packages, sway lock, way bar. That's all good. Way bar, WTR. That's a weather script. Eh, I don't think we're going to use that. Why do I have a weather script in here? Gross. Uh, XTG portal hyperland is good nerd fonts we're just gonna clean up the script a little bit and you might be thinking well Titus I, I want to see it done just one by one well here's how most Linux users do it they sit there on Google searching oh what projects do I need what things do I need honestly I think it's easier just to do a script and that way you can kind of see exactly where all your packages are, what you're installing and go, oh, that's changed. And then you update the script and then you know exactly what you're doing. And then you just run it. And then it just, in a perfect world, it'll just work. But if it does fail, then you can see exactly where it fails. So I think it's good. Hyper cursors, hyper lang. Okay, got that. So hyper cursors, hyper cursor. Is it cursors or cursor? Just hyper cursor, okay. And what was the other one? Hyperlang, huh? What the hell is Hyperlang? It's already installed, but let's go ahead and add that. Hyperlang. Okay. Oh, it's the config language. Okay. Okay, so we have Hypercursor, Hyperlang, Hyperpaper. Dude, he's really expanding this just in the past year. Yeah, moving fast. I like it. All right, we got ND, NWG look so we can set everything. That's looking good. Now let's go through the config file before we launch into this and start installing. Let's go into the dot configs. We're going to remove Waybar. We'll remove Swaylock. And then let's go into Hyper. Let's vim Hyperland. First thing on the agenda, killing line 51 multi samples. We were running into a problem with that. That's apparently changed. Let's look at our auto launches as well. We've got D -dub, uh, update dbus, portal, that's fine, that's fine. Gnome authentication agent, really? What the hell am I using on this one? What am I using for my poll kit? Okay, close this out. Let's go Haru Q, QS poll kit. So I'm using, I think I'm using Mate poll kit. Pretty sure, like. 95% sure. All right. So which Mate pull kit? So if we look at this, no Mate pull kit in. Okay. What am I doing? One second. I just got to check. What the heck am I doing for my pull kit? Uh, yeah. I'll pull kit dash Mate dos agent. Okay. That is what I need right here. We already got the D-Bus, Flameshot, uh, Pycom. No, we're not going to need Pycom. Uh, all that looks good. All right. So we'll just take this guy, switch that over. WL Sunset. I'm going to delete that. Uh, Sway BG. What, how's, what's paper, hyper paper? That's a brand new one. Blazingly fast wallpaper utility. All right. 
Uh, what do we got for usage? So we'll install hyper paper, blah, blah, blah. Usage, it's going to be config hyperpaper.comp. Nice. Uh, preload, blah, blah, blah. All right. We'll copy that out. Vim hyperpaper.comp. All right. More. Can I just do a path? I don't want to specify each one. That's lame. Really? I guess I could loop it and just pull it in from my path. So it would preload and then do wallpaper. But this is a config file, so I can't really do it for you. Bash script. Yeah, Faye's going to be better. But I, does Faye work on the uh, way? Eh, that sucks. Yeah, Faye's X11 only. That's what I thought, Nara. Thank you for the correction. Um, yeah, Surely he had an ability to do a folder. I was just doing specific ones. Meh. Ain't nobody got time for that. Hyper. Come on. Come on, Vaxry. All right. I guess we'll do it old school. That's fine. That's fine. I needed to cull my pictures and backgrounds anyways. There's a couple in here I got tired of. All right. Let's see. What do we got? Uh, 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 uh. There's a couple in here I don't like particularly like this one. I'm going to trash. I'm tired of the outer space one. The rest of these I can go with. Oh, I hate this one too. Snorlax. Sorry, I'm not a Pokemon fan. It, it goes to the curb. And uh, the rest of these I like though. Oh, and I hate this one too. Um, All right, that's good. So we're going to do that. Uh, this is on my GitHub Nord background. Anything you pretty much see in any of my streams, I try to upload to GitHub. So then if you do want to steal something from me, you totally can. So if you want anything, go to the Nord-Background repo. All these wallpapers are in there. Uh, I forgot who gave it to me on stream, but that's basically what I do. So, yeah. All right, we'll do that. And then AI to the rescue. Wouldn't be a stream without me leaning on old AI. All right, let's go open. Actually, let's go open folder. We're going to come on over to Hyperland Titus. And over here, we'll just save that out. And we're going to go in the dot config uh, hyper paper. All right, cool. Redo all the preloads and wallpapers. Or, oh, we're just doing one wallpaper. And I wonder if hyper paper can change. See, there's got to be. Let me read more of the documentation. I feel like there's got to be like a randomizer or something. Hyper CTL, hyper paper. So you preload all these and then set the wallpaper variables. Okay, SWW or Faye. Check this on Hyperland Wiki. Okay. Um, interesting. So you can actually set different workspaces to different backgrounds. I really dig that. I kind of want to just stick with this just because I've never used it before in my life. And I like using all of the, uh, I kind of want to keep the whole hyper ecosystem in play. Dude, does it have random? No. Okay. Okay. Well, whatever. Uh, all the papers from, uh, what, what was that folder again? I think it was pictures, Nord background. All right. Got that. Cool. Uh, that is not all my images. AI, you're hallucinating again. Yo, grab the image names from, good Lord. I'm here for AI taking over, but it wouldn't be a tightest stream without me complaining once on how stupid AI is. Come on. I, I just want you to take care of some stupid tasks for me. <sighs> you dumb AI. I said grab all images from the folder. Spotted with an error. Oh my God. Ah. All right, let's try. We're switching to GPO. All right. Uh, redo all the... It's a language model, not an AI. <laughs> oh, God. If you can't even LS the directory for me and just fill in the preloads, what good is these language models? Like, it's such a basic, basic, tedious task that I want them to do. That's it. I just, I just want this tedious task done. That's all I want you to do. It's not rocket science. Super easy. All right, redo all the preloads. Preload 
uh, with images from directory. But AI is going to take our jobs. If AI takes your job, uh, internet's going to get mad at me if I say that. I can't say it. Uh, I mean, yeah. Can you not just list the directory and fill in the names for me? You really are stupid, aren't you? <sighs> okay. Thanks for nothing. All right. Um. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh perfect let's go uh yeah uh let's go ls whoops was it nord background yeah, that was it <sighs> all right um preload equals path name png okay cool yank and oops let's go v and we're just gonna do a substitute because stuff all right Cool, substitute, and we're just gonna go beginning of line with um, reload equals or backgrounds. Oops, my hat, my bad. Uh, well, let's escape these characters. Oops, no. Oh man, did I mess that up? I did, or slash. Uh, I, I think I did like an insert. I don't know what my insert hotkey is, so we're just gonna have to retype it all. Nord backgrounds. Okay. Does that look good? Yeah, the insert key strikes again. I'm like, I have no idea where my damn insert key is, but I apparently pressed it. Uh, curses of some of these keyboards. All right. Um, cool. So now we preload all that. We're good to go. Uh, oh, no. I messed up. All right. Well, so Titus picture um, pictures with Titus backslash pictures cool now that looks better what do we what do we like does that look good to you guys so we'll preload those in and then I, I wonder how you can do like a random wallpaper with hyper paper can you do a random random huh let's go hyper paper wiki Okay, preload wallpaper, and then just set it. What about uh, randomization? People just watch the same wallpaper day in and day out. Blame. I'm just gonna say it out loud. That's just lame. Okay. Hmm. Control F random. Random is not found. All right, par. Par says check out ML4W's Hyperland alt files. Yeah, most use a script to grab a random wallpaper and feed it to hyperpaper. Oh, uh, okay interesting and then just do the command oh so first do a preload and then the paper so they don't do a configuration file i get it all right that makes more sense uh what do we want to use i want to look at a cool paper cool background let's uh let's see what do we have for backgrounds i'll just pick one I like this 4w7 one we'll just do that one um ba -da -da. Where's that 4W7? Oh, okay. All right, we'll just take this guy and put that right here. All right, for good good enough. That's weird. There's a comma out of place here. Should these preloads have commas? Nah, that's wrong. I think, uh, all right, cool. Uh, so we got hyper paper in here. What else we got? I think we're ready to roll. Uh, hyper, XDG portal, hyperland, keybind. Let's look at hyperland config one more time. Uh, we'll change way bar out. W clipboard history. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, sway BG. Delete that. Execute once. So we go hyper paper. Jeez, let's read it. Hyper CTL, hyper paper. We'll figure that out. It isn't even required. So we can just do a bash script. I, I wish I would have read this beforehand. So that's fine. How would you load it? Execute one hyper paper. To run hyper paper on startup, just hit execute once hyper paper. Okay. Hyper paper. Okay, cool. So I, I kind of figured that's how it goes. Um <clears throat> I feel like we're missing one more thing. Oh, G bar. Let's look at G bar real fast. G bar Linux. So this one hadn't been updated in three months. That's kind of a sad face, but alright. 
So got it. Uh, build, install, whatever. Done that. Uh, then display G-bar on monitor zero. Either on current monitor, specified monitor, mic, Bluetooth. Okay. So let's just go G-bar zero. So I think on this one, we can just go execute equals G-bar zero. And that should launch that for us. Now, how are we doing the menu in G-bar? I think this should be sufficient. Now, there is a bunch of features and widgets we can get kind of crazy with. Uh, how we want to work with the menu? Like Rofi, I guess. I like just a Rofi configuration. We'll probably just pull that from my DWM. I don't see anything here that's problematic yet. Okay. So that should launch uh, GVAR0. We have all the things set up. We have our pull kit, hyper paper. I feel like this is just gonna not work at all though. All right, let's see. Uh, all right, moment of truth. We ready to roll? Let's go. And set hyper. Uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, would you like to install packages? Yes. Yay, not found. Okay, well, one second. Kind of feel like we gotta fix our script here. Jeez, this is kind of a mess. All right, let's go. I think we have yay. Uh, let's go switch over to Sonnet. They can switch this over for me. This is actually, it, it does pretty good for bash. So we'll just go bash, uh, check for yay or paru in script, use proper AUR. Uh, time shift is what I use D4 for the snapshot of the machine. Alrighty, command dash V paru or yay. Nice. And then we switch over to the AUR helper. Perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. Cool. All right, fix that. So then paru or yay. We'll install those guys. Now we switch back. All right. Yeah, so afterwards on this stream, uh, you can always check out the streams by, uh, I'll upload and edit these. And then usually about a week after you see the edited versions down on YouTube. Uh, the YouTube streams itself, I honestly thought about killing all the YouTube streams because I kept getting copyright striked uh, from the music that plays, the little background music you hear. So what I have to do is in post, I have to strip out and then modify it with high compression to kind of distort any background. And then re-upload all my YouTube stuff. It's kind of a pain in the butt to do YouTube streams. That's why most people don't do dual streams between Twitch and YouTube. It's just not worth it in a lot of ways. But I like you guys being able to see both streams. But yeah, I disable everything. And then from the DVR, that means somebody can't call my screen and then copyright strike me while I'm live. And then afterwards, it's just a huge mess, man. Uh, YouTube streaming sucks so bad. Like I am so mad at Google. It, it it's such a just a complete shit show. I don't understand why it's so bad, um, but here we are. Um, anywho, oops. I guess we didn't get we didn't get one thing going with SDDM. What was I using? I don't. I don't even use an SDDM. Oh, this is just one I made, Jim. So uh, hyperlantitis, but it's super out of date. So we're we've got to fix a few things in the stream. Uh, the, the actual script itself. Uh, I'm actually kind of okay with this not working for now. Uh, let's see what happens with Hyperland. Crash, core dump. Hyperland crash report. Well, that's not good. What happened there? Hmm. What do you, my, hmm. Does Hyperland not work on NVIDIA cards? Um, hmm. It looks like we have a rendering issue, so definitely a GPR, a GPU probably issue. They work. Uh, you need to add lanes to the config file. Okay. Oh, hyperland.org forward slash NVIDIA. Okay. Good to know. Uh, let's just chop back into here and let's do that. Thanks for the link there, Phoenix. Okay. Proprietary driver setup. No official support. So just know <laughs> you're on your own. If you go this route it is highly recommended to use them. All right. We do use the proprietary drivers. That's fine. You can choose between Nvidia or Nvidia DKMS. I'm using Nvidia LTS. 
uh, generally recommended to use the DKMS package as you won't have to rebuild the init RAM FS manual every time the kernel or drivers update, for example. If you're using a kernel that isn't Linux or Linux LTS, the DKMS package is required. Okay, fine. Yep, yep. EGL Wayland. Am I just missing this package? No. All right, that's there. All right, then we have a DRM kernel mode setting. Since NVIDIA does not load kernel mode setting by default, enabling is required to make Wayland compositors function properly. To enable it, the NVIDIA drivers modules need to be added to init RAM FS. So we're gonna go into the mkinitcpio.conf in the modules array, add the following, which is gonna be NVIDIA, NVIDIA mode set, and NVIDIA DRM. Then create and edit an nvidia.conf and said this. Okay. So let's take a peek at that. 3T, thanks for the prime. All right. We got our init, uh, or no, I think that's mk init.cpo.com. Then we got our modules right here. Oops. Um, now we can still type it in. So we're going to add nvidia, nvidia mode set, nvidia uvdm, and nvidia drm to our modules. Um, and then let's pseudo write that. All right, write that out, quit. And then the next one is gonna be in mod probe NVIDIA comp. I don't know if this, if this doesn't, ex we, we can, what is in my mod probe? I'm kind of curious. AMD GPU over, oh, that's right. Back when I had a, oh man, let's, uh, let's jump over to mod probe. I think I need to clean out some of this anyways. I don't think I need this AMD override anymore. Oops. Uh, let's look at the blacklist. Just blacklisting the in onboard sound. I like to force all my sound drivers directly over into my DAC. I, I use a USB DAC so I have a really clean audio out of the speakers. I don't like any of that. If you ever get like any hisses and stuff like that. If you're an audiophile, you pretty much have to use a USB DAC. So what I like to do is just completely disable all onboard audio. So that's fine. And then what's the KVM? Uh, I think that was added during one of my PCI pass-through sessions. So having done that, let's go nvidia.comp. And what we're going to do is just add that. Perfect. Lastly, rebind the init FS with sudo make that and then reboot. I think this is going to break something. Maybe. Uh, we'll find out. <laughs> so we'll remake our MK init CPIO, reboot, and then NVIDIA should work just fine. Okay. Nice. That all looks like it went off without a hitch. Add these variables to your Hyperlon conf. So let's add these variables to it. And all right, Hyperlon Titus and cd.com oh actually i'm not gonna add it here let's just go into my config folder we're gonna add it directly to here because most people aren't gonna need this configuration so it won't be part of the actual script so we'll add this nvidia um enable all right easy peasy good documentation i gotta say very good documentation here as far as VPAIO, oh, let's see, what else do we have? VA API hardware video acceleration, hardware acceleration on NVIDIA and Wayland is possible to NVIDIA VAPI driver that may solve issues in Electron apps. Okay. Well, hell, let's let's just keep going. Well, might as well. Let's let's have as little problems as possible if we can. Kind of a pain, but hey. And then let's grab this driver configuration. Uh, what do we got? Environment, NVIDIA backend direct. Okay, cool. Rendering environment variables. If you encounter crashes, change that. If you face problems with Discord displaying, GLX vendor library name NVIDIA. Oh, the comment out that line for that. I don't really care. I don't really use Discord except for like a tab and browser. I never get notified for anything on Discord. So if anybody ever tries to contact me in Discord, I'm not ignoring you. It's just... I'm a weird person and I like to use it in a web page, kind of like sandboxed out. Flickering and electron apps. I think we just talked about that. Flickering and X Wayland. Fixing other random flickering. Lots of flickering, huh? All right, I guess we'll see if we see any flickering. Um, I do not have like a 3070 or anything. We are using a 4080. I want to say, no, 4070, 4070. 
Super. And then suspend wake up issues. Okay. Man, what a pain. All right, let's go. <laughs> Discord is my favorite spyware. I think a lot of people would agree with you. Does X Wayland run X server in the background? Not really, Razo. X Wayland's kind of like a. It works, but it's kind of. It's just a little jank. It's just a band aid for applications that don't have Wayland compatibility. Most applications I've seen in X Wayland kind of work like a giant turd. And it's just best to find a Wayland application that isn't crap. Uh, because if you have to use like an Xorg application in Wayland, it's not a good experience. It's just, just switch. Just use Xorg if you're gonna, if you got a bunch of Xorg apps. That's the one thing that I still am stuck on Xorg a lot with is because I love Synergy. And like, even though we're kind of testing out Hyperland today, I know I'm not gonna switch to it just because I do have some Xorg apps that I'm just like, ah, I still haven't found an alternative for. Maybe I could hit it Vaxery up and be like, hey Vax, can you, uh, you know, I know you like to spend a lot of time and fix problems that everyone else uh, doesn't fix. So could you just get on the project input leap, input dash leap on GitHub, and then just fix it for Wayland? And you can make it Hyperland only, I'd be okay with that. And then just modify Hyperland to work with input leap, and then I can go completely over to Wayland. That'd be awesome. I'm sure it would only take you a month or two to code all that because literally hundreds of people have tried to do it and have failed. There are alternatives. No, there's not. It's uh, input leaps. I think the closest I've seen for synergy alternative in Wayland. Uh, Hyperland is smoother than PyCom. Yeah. Yeah. For the animations, for sure. I mean, let's see. So this is what I got for DWM, right? So that's, that's our animations right now using Xorg. Now this is a special PyCom fork made by FT Labs, so it's not quite the same. I understand that, but I wanted to give context first. So now let's go and try and launch into Hyperland. Hey, we got a cursor. Nice. Okay. So here is Hyperland's animations. It's cool. Okay. So this is Hyperland. Now this is current theming. I wonder what happened with G-Bar. Ah, did it not get installed? I guess it didn't. Did uh, did it bomb out on us? I can't remember. Oh, we installed it in the VM. Oops, that's right. We didn't install it over here. Yeah, no background yet. That's okay. We'll get it. Yeah, we can also edit the animations and everything. Oh, okay. So bar zero. And then we got it up there. Eh. Okay, that's cool. Um, all right, let's go into our hyper config. What are we doing? G bar. Hmm. Maybe this should be like execute once. Maybe. Oh no no. So where do we quit? Where do we quit and relaunch? I was using Brave back when I was doing this. Okay. Thorium. Oh, maybe that should be execute once. Hindsight's twenty twenty on that. Okay. Uh, animations, shadows. Yeah, we got two bars now. Uh, oh yeah, key binds is what we're looking at. Like I was getting sidetracked. I was like, ah, pretty colors. Okay, then super L, Titus W11. Oh, I had a script to launch uh, Windows 11. That's funny. Um, that actually should be looking glass client dash full screen. And I'm gonna put that as do I want to go Windows? Nah, probably like W. I feel like I'm going to regret that bind. W logout, probably. Super F1. What does that do? Ah, okay. Man, I like that. That's cool. Gives you a little cheat sheet on uh, your hotkeys. Okay. Uh, WCTL for that. Player control, screenshot. It's not Thor. Oh, it's Thorium browser. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, it does work. Let's, uh, I thought there was like a kill command. Kill and relaunch via key binding should be in here, right? I'm missing it, aren't I? Hyper picker, sh control shift X, uh, extra circle. Uh, I don't know. Oh, so these kind of give you GPU usage. This one gives you, oh wait, you guys can't see that. 
Oh, one second. I, I can't get back to my screen. Damn it. That's right. Because my way, my synergy is not working. Uh, but basically, yeah, those little circles in the top part give you readouts of like CPU. Uh, we got CPU, GPU, disk usage, um, all of that. All right. It's super shift Q to kill Hyperland. Thank you. Okay. Hyperland it up. All right. Now we're, we're down to a single bar. I like it. B4, thanks for the follow. Yeah. So this is pretty cool. What else do we want to do with Hyperland? I kind of like this setup. You got a very minimal, like, uh, G CPU usage. Let's go B top. And I mean, honestly, everything that's being used is really QMU. Hyperland itself, almost taking no processing power. G bar is super minimal. Um, probably because it's written in Rust. <laughs> uh, I'm sure other other programs write it properly. I I just I, I don't know what it is about Waybar. I just don't like it. And G bar is just so simple. I kind of just dig it. Uh, set background with hyper paper. Okay, we'll do that. Raz, let's see what we got going on here. So with hyper paper, hyper paper cannot launch multiple instances of hyper paper at once. So I think you can do like hyper CTL, and then you can do hyper paper. And then let's see what we got. So hyper paper wiki. So the config doesn't really matter. So we'll do a preload and then wallpaper. So we'll do like hyper paper like that, but let's go into pictures Nord. And then I think we wanted like the 4W7E9 JPEG. So something like that. So let's come up preload and then just put that in. Hmm. What about that? No such file. Do we got to do a full PWD? Well, okay. That works. And then set the wallpaper, right? Oh, uh, do you have to specify the monitor? What are we, what are we rocking? So we're using HDMI a one. Okay. And if we look over here, it's just wallpaper, but you also need to put quotes. Okay. So quotes, HDMI dash a dash one comma that, and then a uh, hyper sock error. Does it need the absolute path? I guess we could do absolute path there. Oops. Um, just do an absolute path just to rule it out. Cannot connect hyper piper sock error. That's interesting. So I, I, I don't think that's working. <laughs> Let's try a different one. I think hyper paper is a bit of a bust. Let's try SWWW. Solution to your Wayland wa wallpaper woes. Oh, elegant. All right, cool. Let's see what we got. It's written in Rust. Already, already a bonus point there. Uh, we do have a daemon that we will run. Then different terminal, pass this through. Specify outputs. Oh, look at this wipe transition. Holy crap, that's slick. You can do an outer transition. Oh my gosh. All right. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. You can call me a master themer by any means. Uh, I think it just, you just specify the image path and it just goes. Uh, you just got to start the daemon and that's it, it looks like. Well, let's try it out. So. Let's go Paru S, S, W, W, W. It's in the basic one. I've actually already installed it. Apparently I was messing around with this at one, once upon a time. So S, W, W, Damon. All right. And then in another, oh, what's going on here? Where's my tiling? Okie dokie. What happened there? All right, fine. We'll just push you to three. I wonder why my tiling is not working there. Works over here, maybe because the program's running. So strange, okay. Awkward, okay. SWW daemon, start that loop over there, and then we can set it over here. So we have SWW, and then I think we just point to the path and it should work, in theory. Now we could also set this up in the background to execute once on startup. So if we just go image and then Let's try and or this is an absolute path, but technically it should work. It is a directory, so we can't feed it a directory. You can also specify outputs, path to image. Um, see what we got. Oh, weird. Okay. Um, 
you can do an options and then path the image to display dash o common separated outputs to display the image at no resize fill color filter transitions transitions more transitions huh so i guess just is that it okay surely someone has my same setup out there right that that's a thing i'm not crazy you're crazy i'm not crazy yeah so that's that's a path so you have to specify an image okay i see it yeah thanks dev panda lame uh all right well i guess we can write a bash script to do this but what's up with i swear like the wayland guys the wayland guys okay obsess so much about the look they didn't think to themselves, hey, what's some basic functionality that everyone will use? Maybe, just maybe, I might be off my keel rocker here, but just maybe there's other people out there that would just like to specify the path and then just, it would immediately cull and then randomize all the images in there and just display them. So the user wouldn't have to be running a bash script in the background to do such a basic task. It, it should just be built in, it should be Feature number one. Instead, they spent hours of their time with these cool transitions. I can't take these people seriously. What the hell? And I know I feel like an old man when I'm like, hey, DWM just works. But there's like many things about just these really legacy things that just basic features that sometimes are just missing. And there's all this cool flash and, and flair to all of these new projects, which are great, but they're just not polished enough to have like just the really core functionality that are super important to me. Running a bash script in the background is not a good solution in any scenario. Full stop. Uh. <laughs> DWM works adds 55 package. It's true. It's true. You're, you're not wrong. All right. Sorry, I had to get that off my face. I still love these projects. I still love these projects. I'm not, it's not, a, it's not saying anything bad. I'm just like, let's, let's see if it can display the wallpaper, right? That's, that's really the, that's the thing that matters. Okay. We have a wallpaper. Yes. Um, okay. All right, cool. Well, that's, that's neat. Uh, that is really neat. Uh, I don't, I don't even remember what I was doing. All right, let's go. <sighs> All right, so what we're gonna do here, just add that in. Then we got our G bar, we got our pull kit. Well, I guess we should try the pull kit. Let's see if that's working. Oh, and we also, before running the SW, did, there's probably a m more elegant solution than this, Damon. So that, and then set that, okay. Transitions, okay. No, Hyperland's its own thing. I'm not a big fan of Sway either. Yeah, I tried the uh, SWW image in the path and that wasn't working for me. So, I don't know. Wainergy is a client only. You can't do Wainergy servers last time I looked at it. We can take a peek. Wainergy server. Yeah, so this is just a client for Wayland compositors. So the main issue that Wayland has is it just cannot host things very well when it comes to like multi PCs uh, for Synergy. But yeah, I saw this one, the closest thing I found that has a shot to where I can actually take Wayland a little bit seriously is Input Leap. Input Leap's close. Open source KVM software. These guys forked Barrier many years ago and it's actually really cool, written in C++, very solid goal. And if like, let's say I was in just Xorg, I would just use Input Leap Input Leap has like all the bells and whistles that Synergy or Barrier or any of those, uh, this this has it all. So Input Leap's an amazing project and they do have a, a slight function of Wayland capabilities last time I looked at it, where it's starting to get there, but it's still very, very early days and it's very hit and miss. And I think one person got it working on GNOME and that was the only way I've seen it working. Um, but that's a really cool project that I'm, I still have an eye on. 
What does search look like in Hyperland? Uh, I'm using Rofi, so it's the same as what it would look like in any other one. Rofi's agnostic, so it doesn't matter Wayland or um, Wayland or that other. Hyperland or DWL. Uh, again, I'm not a Wayland guy. I'm just not. I'm not sold that Wayland's there. I, I don't think Wayland's baked all the way. Uh, I know a lot of YouTubers would disagree with me on this, and a lot, honestly, a lot of developers probably would disagree with me on this. But every time I use Wayland, I encounter bugs, and it is not a great experience. And I just always end up going back to Xorg. And I know one day it will be good, but after doing this for five years, back and forth, back and forth, trying out everything, I've distro hyped to just about every single distribution. I've tried every single desktop environment. I have done literally everything you can do on Linux desktop, damn near. I can safely say I really do not like Wayland. Every single time I'm sitting here going, really? It's way overhyped right now. And I just am not a huge fan of it. Now, it, I think it might end up getting there, but I don't know. I mean, they've literally been saying Wayland's there for five years and more people are forcing the shift to it. I know Fedora is going to stop including Xorg in the repos and it's there. I, and for me personally, if you're doing a tiling window manager in Wayland, I think Hyperland's the number one choice far and away. I like Hyperland better than any other tiling window manager in Wayland. Um, the bars at the top, like Waybar, anytime I tried Waybar, we, we didn't really try it on this stream, but it's it's okay. But it 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 feels a little bloated and it doesn't it doesn't feel good to me. G bar does feel good. It's very minimal, it gets out of my way, it just kind of works. Um and that's why I choose G bar over or way bar. But that's that's where I'm going. That's where I'm going with it. Um I, and a lot of people criticize me because I, I, I'll, and this is a, I, I take this on my chin and I totally agree with them. Um, here, let's, let's just quit out these real fast. Um, exit, ah, let's just quill. Um, I understand. One second, let me move chat a little bit too. Oh, I was going to move chat. Oh, there we go. Oh, wow. Chat's big. All right. Well, I'm not going to take up that much room. Sorry. You're going to chat, chat cut off a little bit um but yeah this i know understand is not the prettiest thing in the world and it's nothing to write home about but the, at the end of the day it just kind of does everything i want it to do and that's where i'm like yeah i understand dwnx 11's been around for decades now but it works and it could be a skill issue yeah could be but i mean the workarounds for like nvidia and that type of thing to get it going i, I kind of feel like oof that's a little rough i mean it did, it did work though but yeah at the end of the day I, I just like to find something that i can do my work on and then just jam it out and that's why i choose this over some of the more fancy stuff today and the more flashy projects i i, I feel like that uh i i totally get why people use those yeah, if your desktop works, why fix it if it isn't broken? I think that's a good point. And that's where I'm at. You know, it, if you can be really efficient in doing what you do, why would you change? And that's that's where I'm at on this. I understand this is not the prettiest thing in the world. It's a bit of an ugly duckling that I've created. But it's my ugly duckling. And it works. It does everything I want it to do in seconds. And it's great. And like, and I, and, uh, you know, it, this is definitely... A, pot calling the kettle black because I, in a prior stream i roasted i think primogen and even tj and those guys because they're using pop os with i3 and i'm like oh my god ugh, gag me i can't ugh, i3 with pop os but here's the thing it works really really well for them and they get all their work done way faster than i could ever do anything that they're doing i just don't like it and that's fine so that's like uh, uh, just a different, it's like your opinion, man. <laughs> Everybody has one. And that's why I'm like, it's not like, I'm not saying people that use Hyperland are wrong or people that use Pop! OS with i3 are wrong, even though they are. You really shouldn't use those. There's way better options. Uh, use Hyperland with Wayland, honestly. But uh, I digress. Uh, I'm just saying, if you can get all your work done and you're super fast at it, I you can't really say it's it's bad. 
because at the end of the day, if it's great for you and you can do everything perfectly, that's really where you should be. <laughs> okay, TJ's moving to awesome. Okay, good stuff. Yeah, and I3 is just not my cup of tea. Wayland has better support for trackpad. Also, Wayland has better support for, oh gosh, probably trackpads, touchpads. Scaling works better on Wayland. You have uh, some people have issues with screen tearing on their systems. If you have like real excessive screen tearing, you really don't run into screen tearing on in Wayland. Wayland has some big positives. I've only kind of looked at the negatives here where I'm like, ah, the problem is, I've already fixed all these issues in Xorg to where I don't have screen tearing. I don't have those things with this Xorg setup. So I don't really care. Uh, now, having said that, where I probably would use like a Hyperland setup would be like my laptop. I honestly could see myself moving to it there because I am having bad screen tearing with my Intel based laptop where I don't have that issue when I'm running a Wayland based stuff. So using Wayland with Hyperland over there would make a lot of sense because one, I don't need Synergy. Two, I don't really have another graphics card and the graphics card that's baked into it does give me screen tearing when I'm watching videos or playing games. So that's annoying where the Wayland counterpart with like Hyperland would, wouldn't have that. So I would probably use like DWM out here. And then for the laptop, I probably would switch over to like a Hyperland type situation. So it really depends on your setup too. So it's not just, hey, I'm familiar with this. I'm gonna just use this because I get my work done. It's also, hey, what's the hardware configuration here? Because certain hardware works better in Wayland. Other hardware doesn't work as well in Wayland. Obviously like the Nvidia type setups, a little jank. And you'd probably be better off with Xorg. And it just, there's that consideration too that a lot of people miss when looking at these types of things. Yeah, you could also use DWL. I, I do need to revisit D, but DWL. We'll have to do a DWL stream coming up. I always use a secondary streaming PC for everything. That way when I reboot the system or go into BIOS or anything like that, uh, or whenever inevitably I nuke my system, you guys get to see all the shenanigans the, that come from that. So the secondary system is set up more like you would see in like a radio station or a, a traditional studio. You think PyCom has noticeable screen tearing? Uh, I don't know. Uh, how do I test that? So here is this. Here, let's just take these two windows. Let's go like mid screen with it. And let's see if we can like we can get some animations going. I don't know. I don't see really any tearing in my my old man eyes. I mean, what do you guys think? I'm making y'all dizzy? What OS is the stu studio bit PC running? Uh, Windows. Windows. <laughs> yeah, tearing wouldn't show up on stream really. I think when you play like a video, like a really fast paced video or game, you can really notice it is probably the biggest thing. My new job's giving me a Chromebook. Whoa, that's a bold choice. I saw your videos about them. They're almost two years old. Have you have opinions changed? Are they still an underappreciated masterpiece? Ah, oh, man, you're going to get me in trouble. Lusano. I, I did call Chrome OS and Chromebooks. Uh, specifically, the one I had was an IBM ThinkPad. Still have it for Chrome OS. I think it is an underappreciated masterpiece still today. Anytime I'm on Chrome OS... I'm like, it does work. It does its job pretty well. There's not any viruses or shenanigans really going on with them. You can lock it down and really control a large environment really easy with them. And they really just don't break. I think Chrome OS is definitely a great environment for certain use cases. And I think it is a very underappreciated operating system. It's just very limiting and it's like linux if steve jobs was in charge of <laughs> it's as if steve jobs was in charge instead of linus torvalds <laughs> is how i look at chrome os chrome os is very predictable and there's certain things i love about chrome os too i i know you guys are just immediately like i'm you're done titus you're canceled for saying this but there's some really cool features with it, specifically uh, GPU acceleration in containers. The containerized GPU acceleration is amazing over there. When you get the LXCs and uh, 
you're going through the terminal and you're doing certain containerized things and installing Linux based apps in Chrome OS. Uh, it's beautiful. It's, it's some of the best experiences I've ever had on a PC. So yes, I'd still say that today. I just won't make a video saying that because holy crap, the comments in YouTube, it is not a popular opinion. And every other YouTuber out there bashes Chrome OS because it's a popular thing to do, but damn it. It's a good operating system. I'll die on that hill. Well, I'm not going to die on that hill because I'm not going to tell anybody about it unless they directly ask. So let's move on and change the topic before everyone clicks off this stream. <laughs> you know, uh, would you recommend Chrome OS Flex now? Yeah, Chrome OS does not work for crap on a lot of generic hardware. I've, I've tested Flex and it's it's an awful, awful implementation. That was a big miss. That was a swing and a miss with Flex. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, just call me a Google fanboy, but at the same time, I will give you the straight up on Flex, and it's not something you ever really want to go down. At that point, learn Linux, install Linux, use Linux. Uh, you you don't. There's no. Mm, there's no world where I'd install and use Chrome OS Flex on anything. That's just. Uh, that's just crazy sauce. Do you know people are working on Nix for Windows? Uh, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. Windows, the problem with doing like a big, giant uh, Nix install or honestly, a lot of third party tools for Windows is Windows can throw some curveballs your way from a design aspect. And honestly, just managing the Windows utility itself has been interesting to see how fast Windows moves and changes things and really screws up multiple different fun core functionality. It's a bit wild. So yeah, I could see people doing that. And there's some commercial products already out there that kind of do that. But that's when you start running into like crowd strike type situations where uh, inevitably a lot of these places they can have when they're interacting with Windows at such a base level, it could be very, very bad. Uh, and to give other explanations of that, uh, I remember, I don't know if it, there are many people that do like MSPs that watch me, but uh, Kaseya, I once upon a time, this would have been more than 10 years ago. This would have been, shoot, I'm going to date myself on this one. 2008. So 16 years ago. Holy crap. Uh, but yeah, anyways, yeah, Kaseya is, uh, I've used that back in the days when I think they were actually up and coming startup before. It was, it was actually a decent product back in those days. And then I think somewhere in the neighborhood of about 10 years ago, they were compromised. Um, don't quote me on this one, but I want to say they were compromised and there was a massive security issue with it. And uh, I want to say they had a lot of like remote export exploitation and stuff, stuff like that happening. Um, I, I don't know what the update is on that. And like I said, don't, um, heck, let me look up the news article because that's one other thing. But anytime you get these companies that have like ring zero style access or changing like full configuration of windows, it can be a bit of a nightmare for them. Uh, that's why like with my script, it gets in, makes the changes, gets out. But anything that sits there and runs in the background, that can be a little rough. Um, Kaseya, uh, security, uh, remote exploitation. When was that? I don't know when that was. I don't know if anybody really cares. I just want to look. It was a ransomware attack. Yeah, that's right. It was a ransomware attack on Kaseya VSA. Uh, back in, oh, this is only three years ago. But yeah. Oh, and then SolarWinds too also had a mass massive hack too. I don't know. I don't know. You got to have something on your system to manage them remotely in windows but man that's a it's a tall order it's a tall order so i always uh yeah i always uh i root for anybody that tries it but it is very difficult alacrity on windows 11 any good i need to try it a little bit more uh i don't know on that what do you think of microsoft azure certifications chris do you think it's worth it so i don't know i so i've, I've hired roughly probably 50 or 60 people in my career and I've gone through a different path than most. I don't have very much college at all, uh, but maybe like a year or two of community college, right? College dropout right here. And I went in and worked up to like an entry level position 
doing like Geek Squad at Best Buy back in 2002. It wasn't even called Geek Squad back then. Your black shirts. And then Geek Squad took over and I was with that, them for a couple years as they launched. And then I transitioned to contract work for big business. Uh, it was really nice for Geek Squad because back in those days they did business work. So I got to see a whole bunch of different systems, bunch of uh, businesses. So I got to see a little bit of everything, which is great. So I got to dip my toe in pretty much everything and I had a good aptitude for it. So I was able to get and expand on from that. And uh, I, that's not really a viable career path now, obviously, because like most most technicians, you have to like intern somewhere and then you only know about that specific environment. Uh, there's probably MSPs and stuff that you can do. I know here there's a couple MSPs that have reached out to me that I could easily go work for if I needed um, that are really good and they they touch more of the higher end systems. But I don't know on SMBs how that would work, uh, how viable that is in 2024. Anyways, I digress. Uh, so that's where I got kind of cut my teeth in the IT field. And then moving up from there, uh, did a lot more like higher end contract work for businesses and then getting in-house, basically being brought in as like an IT manager where I facilitated everything. And then finally moving up to like an IT director position at a big company that about a probably a probably about a billion dollars in annual revenue and uh, three or 4,000 users. And then I did that for a little bit. And then finally, uh, I was like, this sucks. I really don't like managing people. And I really don't like a lot of these higher end things. And it was just a lot of stress managing like the data center and all the different things that happen on day to day on such a big business. So I took a step back and, uh, Still, still have a day job that I work elsewhere just as a, a basically an IT manager, but I wouldn't even really call myself that, is, even though that's my official title. I really uh, basically just have a really small business now that I kind of take care of on the side. And then YouTube and Twitch and all that other stuff, I, I do mostly main time. I would, I would say most of this is my main job, and I've really enjoyed that blend. So that is my experience, which is super unique. And I don't know how qualified I am to recommend certifications based on my history, because to me, certifications are a way to get your foot in the door. And my path was mostly through people networking. So certifications were a way to get your initial job. And then you networked through people uh, for every other job from there on. For me personally, uh, I also was a lead engineer for a satellite company doing telephony work in Linux uh, for three years doing that as well. Because when one of the jobs kind of cut back or scaled back, I filled it in with another job. So I actually worked two jobs doing uh, that. And then I would do just basic IT management over here. And then over here, I would do more of a engineer's role where I'd build out like telephony boxes and then ship those out. So very uh unique setup and i i'm trying to think where i would learn a lot of that stuff most things were on the job learning and just pure experience where i've certainly made some bad decisions and learned from them in my career and certifications help me get my foot in the door in places like i get an mcitp in 2008 for enterprise administration and that helped me um, I don't think that really did much for me, actually. I don't even, I don't even think that really made a splash in the water <laughs> because I think of my job trajectory. Maybe, maybe when I moved up in 2016, having the, that credential helped, but, uh, most of it was all experience based. I just checked a lot of boxes for people because I had such a vast different knowledge set. So when you ask a question like, Hey, should I get a Zer certs? I'm like, well, it depends on what search you have and what you're trying to do. I think cloud-based certs are good if you want to try and get your entry-level position managing like AWS servers or that type of thing in an environment. That's fine. But um, from there, don't get obsessed with certs. You know, whenever I, I, I've just run into too many people that have the whole alphabet after their name and they're just paper tigers. And that isn't good. 
I, and I think you got to go do it. And to do it, really, the certs, the only thing they're there for is to get your foot in the door so you can get an entry-level job. And then once you get the entry-level job, you get the experience. That's... Uh, that's where all the value is. Like I could ask any of my old bosses, I'm like, hey, what's more important to you? And I could say a whole variety of things, certs, college diploma, there, uh, in, a lot of higher education really helps for that very first level. But afterwards, like 90% of the job is all, hey, what's your experience? And I know that's really disheartening to hear as a 20 year old. So just know, don't get obsessed with certs. Certs are important. Honestly, higher education is just important, but it's not everything. And at the end of the day, uh, as a 40-year-old now, I really could care less if, if I any of my certs in the past I have is super outdated. They don't matter. Uh, so my MCITP or Microsoft Systems Engineer or I have a Citrix. I'm actually qualified to work on Citrix farms. None of that matters. It just, they're so old. Uh, the technology's changed. I'd get in there and be like, oh crap, yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember back in my day, let me tell you some stories about the web interface in Citrix. Uh, guess what? Doesn't even exist now. It's all like Netscaler and all this other new fancy crap I hate. And uh, yeah, that was a weird rant. But I, I don't know, hopefully that helps you. Just just know that higher education is kind of important to get your foot in the door. But once you get your foot in the door and you start getting experience, don't obsess over it. Uh, the only thing I'd say is you know, there's some businesses out there that give you raises based on what search you have. And for that, yeah, go out. I mean, I would just go do a test. You can go to like actualtest.com or some crap uh, and just grab the test study up on the actual answers and then just go take it when you already have the experience and then you just grab your free five thousand dollar raise <laughs> so uh that's where i'm at i know probably someone that's an employer watching this goes oh crap we need to probably remove that <laughs> incentive but at the same time most times the employer is like hey can they actually do the work that's all that matters <laughs> well, that's good. Well, I, I love talking about this stuff. I've really been just very fortunate with uh, with my career. I, and I totally get I'm um, very lucky. But a lot of it, I would say to someone 20 years old, the big thing is entry level jobs, super important. And then the other suggestion I would say is there's two things you need to study. There's the job you're actually going to do. And then there's getting the job that you're actually going to do. And I, what I mean by that is interview skills and people skills are paramount. That will get you the job. What you know will keep you the job. You'll be able to, you'll be able to keep the job once you get it. Uh, I can't tell you how many people are really good at interviewing and they suck at the job and how many people suck at the interview. And I'm like, oh God, this is going to be a rough hire. And then they end up being amazing rock stars. And it's rare it's a rarity you ever see both. And there's two big skills. There's the actual work, but then there's actually interview process, which is a whole different bag of worms, a whole different skill set. Learn up. If you get if you get an interview, understand how to take control of that interview, how to drive the interview questions. Super important. Uh, there's as someone that's conducted a lot of interviews, I know an interview is going bad when someone asks me, hey, what's your greatest weakness? Uh, tell me about yourself. Um, if it starts getting like that, I'm like, crap, I've done something really wrong here because I just, when it comes to canned questions, if that's all you're getting, it's, and you'll probably get that for, uh, entry level jobs. And that's more from the, if the interviewer is inexperienced, they're going to ask a lot of canned questions, but once you get into the higher ups type of thing, you will never run into a canned interview question. Almost none. Like you might have one in there, but uh, I know an interview I sat in where the CEO is interviewing uh, a new uh, director position. And I was there to just for a technical aspect to understand, hey, this guy knows what his stuff or he doesn't. And there was no canned questions. And it was really amazing to see a master person, a master interviewer kind of take control and just be able to uh, interview things. So there's two different skill sets. That whole 
interview process is like its own job, its own skill set. And it's really interesting to see one, a really good person able to conduct an interview. And then two, an interviewee being able to actually have a skill set and help drive the interviewer. And, uh, you know, if you put me in a room with someone that's practically never done an interview, uh, I'm going to be able to really take control of that position and really drive uh, the conversation, which is great. So that's where you want to be. So there's there's a whole different skill set that I haven't even talked to that's not even technical. But interviewing is such a underrated thing that most people they don't tell most most people coming up in a career. It's so important. Sorry, sorry for that rant, but yeah, <laughs> my biggest weakness. <laughs> yeah, an interview is as much the interviewer as the interviewee. It's true. It's true. All you do is rant. This is true. It's, it's what I'm known for. Yeah. Um, and, and social skills with a lot of uh, a lot of things are that. And yeah, if you if you're good with the social skills, there you know you have an amazing amount of lean. You have an amazing amount of slack in how much crap you can get away with. More social skills, the more you can get away with, and the more you'll be able to do as well. So, if you know what? Let's. Uh, I know this is going to be completely out there, but there's just someone out there that this is going to help. So what I do for interviews is, let's say I someone called me up and Titus, we're going to pay you a million dollars. We want you to come in and interview. I'll be like, great. I'll be there whenever you say. I would actually put like, like an interview. Let's just put like a text. I would actually make like um, a whole one sheet and i would probably just be like hey experiences uh and then have like three canned like uh experiences i've gone through uh disasters hey what what have i gone through for disasters out there i would say uh i had a hardware raid fail once that sucked both discs failed at the same time the data was lost how did that recovery go? Then I'd also put up, um, well, it's another terrible thing I've had happen in, in my career. I, and I would put down the worst moments in my career and how I overcame those problems. That is incredibly riveting to listen to. And from an interviewer standpoint, you love hearing that go, okay, wow, this guy's seen some shit. How did he get past that? Put that up so important so a hardware raid failure uh <laughs> you know what there was also a hardware raid um it was uh the back end for it the actual uh card went out hardware raid card went out that was fun <laughs> Uh, it's kind of funny. I love how the autocorrect is actually not far from the truth. When you had the two disc failure, the raid, the data was lost. The data was lost. Uh, that's why you got other backups. That's why raid is not a backup, guys. Um, what else? Uh, there's There's been some fun ones. It, a lot of it is actually data, uh, not hardware raid necessarily oriented. I had a sand go out once. Uh, went down. It had a whole bunch of hosts on it. That was fun. Uh, but yeah, throw throw those up and then major milestones or accomplishments that you want to maybe talk about. But think of more conversational pieces, not like, hey, I'm so awesome. I went to Harvard. They don't care. Um, so really, uh, like, let's say uh, business successes. What, what does that look like? So I would probably say. Uh, I had a huge issue with a client where the client was getting charged about $1,500 a month. It was using like a traditional PRI using a telephony service, right? So this business was getting charged. Uh, hopefully you have spell check. I wouldn't recommend doing this in Vim. Otherwise they're going to be like, okay, let's not hire this second grader. But um, so they're getting charged $1,000 a month for uh, basically hosted VoIP service services. One of one of the big things I did when I came in was oh not not wow. Copilot really took that that one over, didn't they? Um I would say I switched um I actually looked, I didn't want to do this. I you, you could look at other different ones that like you go to Ring Central and many other big 
VoIP shops out there, they're prohibitively expensive and not even necessary. Uh, switched them to a uh, like registrar kind of thing. Uh, not a registrar, but I uh, can't remember the name of it offhand. Uh, it was actually SIP provider and self-hosted like a 3CX server. Uh, or uh, I've also set up tons of asterisk slash free PBX servers instead. Their annual bill went from 12000 to about 1000 Actually, it's less than that. It's probably closer to about $100 a year. So they, they literally saved over $10,000 a year by something I instituted. Business owners love seeing that crap. CEOs love hearing about that. Okay, so we're spending this much on this cloud service or a SaaS, and then all of a sudden you can take that in-house or you can do something where it switches it around. That's a huge win. That's a big success for a business. It's not so much your accomplishments. It's how you did something that saved the company a lot of money. But on the flip side, it could also be how you made the business a lot of money too. Um, like I've put in different uh, procedures that probably saved a ton of money. Uh, you got different, uh, another one that a lot of people probably have done in the world. This is actually Nagios back in this day. Ugh. Uh, Nagios monitoring system uh, was implemented, <laughs> removing the need for solar winds. Solar winds sometimes in some businesses could be hundreds of thousands of dollars in some of the bigger businesses, tens of thousands of dollars in others. Nagios is a, a, technically a FOSS project, I think. Uh, <laughs> I remember I didn't pay anything for it. I instituted that, uh, but I think there's better solutions than Nagios. Uh, so yeah, you can go kind of crazy here. So like when I still have a day job, I don't think I have a day job because they necessarily need me. I have a day job probably because when you look at all the different systems I've installed over the years, hell, they're probably making money from all the money I've saved them from a monthly fee to some service that I frankly just set up that, that issue and then you're good. So that's what I think of whenever interviews happen is set up, hey, these are the worst low low points and how I overcame those loop low points in experience, but also experiences in, in the high points would be huge successes that saved the money, uh, the business a lot of money or uh, ended up putting some some new thing in where, where they ended up making a lot more money too. I know there's like an invoicing system I've created uh, and uh, yeah, uh, I remember one time a business was creating like Excel spreadsheets to track government contracts. And that was like, why, why are you guys using Excel spreadsheets? You're sp literally spending hundreds of hours of time per month keeping track of all this crap across all these branches. That's stupid. I'll just write you something. And it was it was ugly. It wasn't it wasn't like, oh, my God, Titus is a genius programmer. No, it was awful uh, what I programmed but it was very simple and it got the job done. So they stopped using Excel spreadsheets and it could be written to by multiple people at the same time and being able to read all that. So just a basic database. So yeah. Uh, anywho, sorry. There you go. <laughs> uh, there. That's so I would make a little cheat sheet, no longer than one page and just say, here's all my experiences. That will, your interviewer will love you for that. And it'll also engage the conversation and steer it in a way that you're going to love it. You're not going to be having to think about your greatest weakness or your opportunities and all these other buzzwords that some canned interviews questions have. Instead, the interviewer is going to look at this and go, oh, that's cool. Tell me more about that. I want to know how you can do that in this business. Is it applicable to this business? Oh, man, so much fun. So much fun. I love it. I honestly love, love the interview process. What programming language would you recommend for starting in an already an IT role? Anything with scripting. Scripting's solid. Scripting's so nice. Uh, so when it comes to scripting, you can do so much with scripting. I think of, oh God, here's another one. Um, 
So we were doing a, a migration from on-prem exchange to O365 in the cloud. And it was a big business, about 2,000, 2000 seats. Uh, and uh, it had already been dragged on by six months by the time I got there. And all this company did, they apparently tried to outsource it to this company. I, I don't know. I think we ended up suing them, so I can't really talk about the details of it that much. But they charged like $10,000 and all they set up was an Azure Active Directory sync. And I was like, guys, I literally could do this in an hour. What, what have you done? And they were like, well, that's about it. And I was like, you're kidding. Okay. So I think I was using like Titan. Titan, uh, oh God, what was it? I think it was like a Titan swing migration. Oh, geez. I can't even remember the tool. Uh, what was the, no, no, maybe, maybe bit Titan, maybe. Yeah. Something like bit Titan probably. So I remember doing that and what that did is it allowed everybody to kind of sync as like a middleman. And then we swing over to the O365. So everyone kept using on-prem, but this kept on-prem and then O365 kind of synced before a hard cutover date. And then there was really bad connection between all the branch offices. So what we ended up doing was <laughs> it, it was, it was, I was like, oh crap, I can't overload all the network at one time because then everyone's going to start downloading from O365 when we switch the mailboxes. So we needed to take all that existing cache and switch it over to the O365 instance. So I ended up again, super jank. I'm not a great programmer, but a lot of times you just say, get it done. And I figured life finds a way kind of thing. And I ended up writing a VBS script that ran through a GPO on startup uh, just once that would immediately take everything when I hit go and switch out the OST file and repoint it all the way to the new O365 file. And uh, it worked great. And I was like, holy crap, time to go to Vegas because I did not think that would work at all. <laughs> that was such a... Uh, it was such a fun, like, migration. I remember just obsessing over that script. And then when it fired off finally and all of them switched over and just a single hour, it got done. And I was like, oh, my God, I thought this was going to take weeks. And uh, it worked perfect. That was probably one of the biggest successes I've ever had where things didn't go wrong, uh, which more often than not, things end up going wrong with a big migration like that. Yeah. Anyhow, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to switch over and do Chrome, probably. Everybody gives me crap on my furry browser. So I'm going to make them even more. I'm going to make their heads explode. What's Google Chrome at now? Good Lord, how many Google Chromes are there? Yeah, we'll just do Google Chrome. There you go. There we go. We're going to go Google Chrome. Google Chrome. Now you all have something new to complain about. Ah, perfect. Just install that. I'm always on the latest security update now. What do you got to say about that now, chat? Oh, what do you got, Caleb? What do we got? Maybe. Oh, cool. It, it built. What do you got? Uh, clap lib error. Huh? I'm not sure what that's going on. You, you, you're missing a dependency for your build. I would say, <laughs> well, this isn't hyperland. This is DWM. We were on Hyperland for a little bit, and then we ended up going, ah, all right, we did Hyperland. It was fun, but in the end, I kind of need my synergy. So back to DWM we go. I'll read this article. It's fun and educational. All right. Well, I love fun and educational. What do you got for me, Peter? Ranking programming language is easy. Oh, sorry for blinding everybody. I feel like we should push this over to the left. And let's just take this guy over. Yes. Perfect. Yeah, there we go. All right. By energy efficiency. Okay, so we're ranking by energy efficiency on... I mean, I don't really care about energy efficiency. I'm just like, does it work? I think we've all gotten to that. Probably C would probably be the best, I would imagine, for energy efficiency, right? Unless, of course, they did like a memory leak error, and then, of course, it was there. Oh, boy, this is quite the read. Did you just send me a novel? You know I'm not good at reading. This is a lot. He's gone into it. Can we just get a breakdown of the actual languages? Let's see. Oh, man. Oh, here we go. 
results of binary trees time energy yeah <laughs> uh look at that look at that uh yeah look at, okay you got c c plus plus rust fortran i didn't think fortran would be so high that's crazy uh oh come on java list why is java so high yeah maybe okay c sharp f sharp pascal oh my javascript typescript towards the bottom where they they belong uh go is kind of why is go so well go does i could see it being more it does usually take a bit more to compile and stuff i, I get it you know and then of course Perl, Perl is more scripting though really than an actual well i guess it's a language but swift i don't even know what the hell that is okay and this one fasta rust at the top all right <laughs> java is everywhere it's insidious <laughs> Oh, Swift is from Apple. That's why I don't know it. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, did you have to use assembly language at one point? Nope, nope. I'm a complete noob. I'm a complete noob when it comes to programming. I'm just decent at scripting. That's really the only thing I'm like good at. Everything else, I'm just terrible. I'm, I, but I like have basic knowledge of so much stuff that it's like I usually can hack around and get things done. It's just it's going to be ugly as sin once I'm through with it. Man, this is a big brain book, though. Holy crap balls. Okay. So totals for energy usage. C is the king. Rust is number two. Very, very close on its heels. C++ below that. And then it just keeps falling. Other big things here. Wow. So the tree huggers will love C and Rust. Good to know. All right. Well, uh, there's a lot more to this article. That is... A lot of data, it is roughly an article that is 50 some odd pages about the energy efficiency of programming languages. Someone had too much time on their hands. Oh my goodness. That's wild. <laughs> uh, C wins again. <laughs> he won the tree huggers. Uh, it's what academics do. That's true. That's true. I'm not an academic. I barely passed school. I'm a failure. I just, just the guy that just gets stuff done. <laughs> huh. All right, guys. Well, I think I'm going to shut it down for today. Thanks for coming out for the Hyperland extravaganza, staying for the rants on job employment, interview skills, and different shenanigans from my past. And uh, yeah, next stream will be soon. Uh, if I don't get one out this weekend, I'm going to try and do it again on Monday. And uh, hopefully start Monday, Tuesday, Thursday now is going to be my new schedule. So we're going to add Monday in because I know I can always get a stream out on Monday. So we're going to just do three a week now. Uh, and then if I can get a fourth win in the weekend, great. If I can't, then that's uh, so be it. But thank you all. Have a great one. See you all later.